Okay, so you can find the full text of this problem. I've linked it separately. Um, it was from, I think, a 1982 um, version of AP Chemistry. Uh, and so it's one of the more famous ones that I think teachers like to reuse just because it's kind of fun. Um, anytime we're going to go over a long problem like this, I'm going to write for myself the four main things I'm looking at after having read the problem. So the empirical formula, the fraction of fluorine, the formula of the solid, and the balanced equation. And then um, I would always suggest that when you're reading a problem like this, especially a long one where it's kind of easy to get lost, that you read through the problem and either you diagram or you translate and balance for yourself so that you can keep track of everything that's going on. So it tells you that water is added to UF6 and it tells you that you have 4.267 grams of UF6 and that you produce some kind of an unknown solid which we're going to say U something, O something, F something because it tells you there's only uranium, oxygen, fluorine. You can see why we call this the UFO problem. We've got a sense of humor. And then there's some kind of an unknown gas. And it tells you that there's 3.73 grams of the solid and 0.97 grams of the gas which we don't know what it is yet. So the first thing we're looking for is the empirical formula of the gas. Um, they tell you that 95% of the gas is fluorine and that everything else is hydrogen. So mental math tells us the other 5% must be hydrogen. Anytime you're looking for an empirical formula in something like this, you're not only allowed to, you're really kind of uh, um, encouraged to assume 100 grams. And in this case, it ends up being a fairly easy transition. You've got 95 grams of fluorine, 5 grams of hydrogen. Key thing to remember is that anytime you're dealing with empirical formulas, molecular formulas, any formulas really, um, you care about moles, you don't care about grams. So when you see something that's in grams, you've got to make sure that you convert it via uh, dimensional analysis. And you say, okay, I've got grams up top, that means grams of fluorine has to be on the bottom. I only really know one thing about grams of fluorine, and that's that I know 19.00 grams equals one mole by looking at the periodic table. And this ends up telling me that I have 0 0.0485 moles of fluorine. I do the same thing with my grams of hydrogen. Grams of hydrogen has to go on the bottom. And because grams of hydrogen has to go on the bottom, I look at the periodic table, I get 1.01 grams are in one mole of hydrogen. And in this case, I see they've been very, very nice to me. And this is 0 0.0485 moles of hydrogen. This is normally where we would say, look at the smallest number, do some kind of a mole ratio, but in this case, you're dividing both by the same number. You don't even have to divide by it, really. You can just look at it and say, oh, this must be a one-to-one -one ratio, because it's the exact same number of moles, which means that my empirical formula must just be HF, okay? So you just got one point on this problem, because you solved for one part of it. I'm going to go back up here and say, now I know this is in some unknown gas, now I know it's HF, okay? And that's going to help me out because later on I need to do the balance equation. Next part of this is a little bit more complicated. Um, there's actually two different ways to do it, and I'll probably post both um, on my written solutions. But I'm going to show you the way I would have done it, just kind of looking ahead at what else I need to do. I would say to myself, all of my fluorine, it wants to know the fraction of fluorine that's in the solid, okay? And when I look at this equation, I say all of my fluorine went into two different places. Either it went into UFO or it went into HF. And now, because I know the formula of HF and I know the formula of this guy, I could figure out how much fluorine is in each of these. So let's start with the UF, 4.267 grams of UF6. And this is kind of my basic stoichiometry here. I say grams of UF6 are on top, grams of UF6 has to go on the bottom. Um, and the molar mass of that guy is 352 grams. I say, but that's not what I wanted. All right, I want just um, fluorine. So for every one mole of UF6, I have six moles of fluorine. And I say that's still not what I wanted because I want grams of fluorine. So one mole of fluorine equals 19.00 grams of fluorine. And I do my mental check. Grams of UF6, grams of UF6. They can cross out, they're exactly the same. Moles of UF6, moles of UF6. They can cross out, they're exactly the same. Moles of fluorine, moles of fluorine. They can cross out, they're exactly the same. And I should be left with grams of fluorine. And after I do all my math, I end up seeing that I had 1.38 grams of fluorine. And I can kind of put that up there in parentheses and keep it in my pocket for later. Now, here you've got actually a couple of options. You can say, um, 
I'll, I'll show the other option on my written because I want to do it this way. I like this way better. Okay, so the other thing I would do then is I would say 0 0.97 grams of HF. And I would say this way 20.01 grams for every one mole. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, but because I want to keep good habits around this, I'm going to write it out. So again, I check grams of HF, grams of HF, moles of HF, moles of HF, moles of fluorine, moles of fluorine, and I'm again in grams of fluorine. And this time I get 0 0.921 grams. Okay. So what I would do at this point is I would say, all right, you actually got a couple different ways again, but I would say I had 1.38 grams of fluorine going in. I know that it ended up in these two places and only these two places. So if I sit, just subtract 0 0.921 grams of fluorine that was in the HF, I end up with 0 0.459 grams of fluorine. That's got to be what's in my UFO. And I divide it by however much went in, so 1.38 grams of fluorine in total went in. And when I do this, I end up with 0 0.33, so the answer can either be 33% if they're asking for percentages, or one-third if they're asking for fractions. And now I'm done with Part D. Now, I prefer to do it this way because I was looking ahead at Part C where it wants the formula of the solid. And know that the solid is only made up of three things. It's made up of U, it's made up of F, and it's made up of O. Okay, UFO problems, yay. And because of how I did this above, I already know that there's 0 0.59 grams of fluorine. Again, because I'm dealing with a formula, I don't care about grams, I care about moles. So by now you've got this memorized that 19.00 grams of fluorine is one mole. Okay, I had some typical technical difficulties that I had already erased because I didn't realize it. So I'm gonna just back up a second. So we were at grams of fluorine, grams of fluorine. And then I can check that grams of fluorine will cross out with grams of fluorine, not moles of fluorine, and that that ends up with 0.024 moles of fluorine. At this point, I still need to find out uranium, and I still need to find out oxygen. If I look at oxygen, I could say, okay, I know that all the oxygen from water went directly into UFO, but that sounds like a lot of work right now because I don't even know how many grams of water. I could figure it out because conservation of mass, I could add up 3.73 plus 0 0.97, subtract out this guy, and then I could, from grams of water, go to grams of oxygen, and then go to grams of oxygen. Or I could say, you know what, why would I do that? I know that all of my uranium went directly from this guy into my UFO. And I know how much of it was fluorine, I know how much of, I had, how much of it I had in total. So if I just subtract, I will end up with 2.88 grams of uranium which I can then go to my periodic table and say there are 238 grams of uranium and one mole of uranium. I can do some math and say that tells me I have 0.012 moles of uranium. Okay, so all I did here was I took 4.267, subtracted out this guy to get this guy because I said all of my uranium had to have come from this guy. All the uranium went directly from this guy to that guy. All right, at this point I'm actually pretty happy because I'm looking at my mole ratios and they look like a one to two ratio. So, so far I know I have a pretty good feeling that I'm doing something right. The last part of this then is to figure out the oxygen. Well, at this point I knew that I had 3.73 grams of the UF guy in total. I know how much of it was fluorine. It was 0 0.459 grams. I now also know how much of it was uranium, okay, which was 2.88 grams. So if I do all of that subtraction out, I end up saying that I have 0 0.3845 grams of oxygen, which again, I use molar mass of oxygen this time to convert into moles of oxygen, and I get 0 0.024 moles of oxygen. Now, I'm not done because this just tells me moles. I still have to convert into mole ratios, but I'm as good as done here because 0 0.012, 0 0.024, 0 0.024, this is very clearly telling me it's a one to two to two ratio, which means that I can now say for part C, my formula is UO2F2, final answer. And then the very last thing it asks of me is it asks me to translate in balance. Um, and I'm just gonna rewrite it so that I have the space. This is because when you do it all correctly, the ratios end up being pretty small. You can more or less guess and check at this point. Um, it doesn't actually, benefit you to do too much more than that. Um, you would say I've got two oxygens here, so let's try this. 
I've got that makes it four hydrogens. Let's make this four hydrogens. This makes it a total of four plus two, so six fluorine, six fluorines, one uranium, one uranium, and I'm done. This is part D. Okay, very long formula, but you can see I went through all four parts. Hopefully that helps out.